Okay. Oh, almost. Let's get coderizing as soon as I get my webcam back here. Maybe? Yes? No? Setting. It's not that setting. Trying to get my webcam plugged in here. We can use that one, though. I've got two webcams. Maybe this will work. I'll be facing more at you this time. Uh, let me check my framing and all that. Hello. Cool. This is the other side of my home office, a.k.a. loft, a.k.a. also bedroom, a.k.a. bookshelf. My name is Mike Bifulco. I am Director of Technology for thegymnasium.com. Uh, gymnasium is an online code school. We offer free, self-paced, video-based courses on the design and development of various web technologies. Uh, our courses span the gamut of technology from um, time management to building uh, web pages with HTML to using tools like Drupal, um, copywriting. Uh, we have courses on jQuery and uh, virtual reality and JavaScript and just design in itself, user experience fundamentals. We have a Node course, a Bootstrap course, a WordPress course, a Sketch course, a GitHub course. You should take all of these. They are all free. You can go create an account for free. And there's actually a strong chance some of you are watching this on thegymnasium.com. And if you're there, I appreciate you watching me. As soon as the stream is done, you should go register for some courses and take them and let us know what you think. Um, anyway, uh, I jump on stream every Tuesday to uh, show you what I'm working on, uh, to work through my thought process as I'm developing and debugging on things, uh, and just to um, sort of uh, give a perspective of what it's like to be someone who's um, developing, learning as they go, uh, and working out in the open. So, uh, here we are on Twitch once again, um, and my goal this week uh, is to keep pushing on some stuff that I had been working in the past. Um, I have a few things that I wanted to work on. My plan, actually, was to work on um, some smaller bugs that are in, in sort of my backlog of things to do, but there's something that I've been in the middle of today that I'm, is, I'm itching to um, get done and, and pushed out of the way. Uh, and so I think we can work on this on stream. It should be relatively tangible, um, visible changes. Um, although it may not be fully completable by the time the stream is over. I will also say, one caveat for today's stream, I am extremely excited uh, for SpaceX's launch of the Falcon Heavy rocket, so I may pause my stream for a bit to go watch that launch at 2.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, provided it doesn't get delayed further. You can go check out that launch time on Twitter, uh, but you should probably watch the stream anyway. But anyway, okay. Uh, yeah, huh, yeah, how y'all doing? Let's do this thing. Here's what I'm working on today. Um, you've seen Gymnasium before. You've seen me work on this stuff. Um, you've probably been on the gymnasium.com and seen some of, some of our awesome courses on this courses page. Uh, what you may or may not know is that I'm working on a release of Gymnasium on the next version of the sort of software architecture that our platform is based on, which if you scroll to the very bottom of our page, you'll see is called Open edX. Um, we're moving to a newer release of Open edX, and with that comes some joyous debuggery and theme updates that are sort of necessary to make are heavy amount of customization viable on top of um, the platform that we're using. And to date, I've done most of that work um, for the next version of, of OpenEdX here. The one lingering thing is this page right here, the courses catalog. Uh, on gymna thegymnasium.com slash courses, uh, you'll see our list of courses. It looks beautiful, it's wonderful, it's lovely. But on the next version of uh, OpenEdX, there have been some changes that have made configuring this page significantly more challenging. Uh, and so my hope today is to work on this a bit. So this is what things should look like. Uh, in the browser window here, you'll see my um, URL is thegymnasium.com slash courses. This is our live public site. You can go check this stuff out at any time. Uh, this is what it looks like on production. On my developer environment, which is in this second tab here, uh, you will see it says localhost 8000 dashboard. Uh, when you see localhost 8000, that means it's running on my laptop uh, in a virtual machine. Uh, and this is any changes that I make in this environment you will not see on production, um, which may or may not be obvious to you depending on your, your sort of developer background. Um, 
these changes are staged to go live, but before they go live, they go through a, a testing procedure and we make sure that everything is all hunky-dory before we set the stuff off. So the changes I'm making here, I'll only see locally, but you can certainly communicate to me if, if there are uh, things that are not matching your expectations or whatever, if something looks funny or if you have a suggestion for how to debug things. So the problem is right now, I wanna build this page, the courses page. I wanna make it look, excuse me, sorry. I wanna make it look like this. And if I go to courses on my VM here, it looks like this. It will also load fairly slowly because my laptop is absolutely slammed when I'm streaming and running a VM and running Chrome and Slack and other things. Usually I close Slack during the stream, but I didn't today. Anyway, it looks like this, not great. This, this tab, not identical to this tab. Closey, closey ishy, eh, kinda. There are some things that are <laughs> similar about it. Um, we wanna make this look more like this. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna be working on today. And um, if I um, have any luck, things will get closer. So we're gonna start with the very basics of this um, page layout. Primarily, first and first mostly, I wanna get this white rectangular background uh, in place on the page. That is an outstanding difference between the two. Right now, this page does not have the white background, but it should. We're gonna start there. So here's how we do this. Let me close all the stuff. Uh, actually, I had it open to the thing I wanted to work on. Okay. Well, <laughs> well uh, let me show you how I would figure out, damn it. Uh, that's fine. This is a good, good um, process too. Let me show you how I would figure out how to get to this bit. So, um, I want to figure out what's on what what file represents this page on my DevStack environment. I'm going to open my. Oh boy, yeah, I should fix that too. That's really annoying. You can ignore all of these font um, 404s here. Um, what's happening here is that we use a. Eh, maybe I should fix this first. Maybe I will. We use a cloud-based type kit setup for our. Uh, fonts, so we use a bunch of web fonts, and they're not configured to load on my virtual machine because I believe they're locked down to certain domains. So actually, I don't know if I can fix this locally. Um, yeah, okay, I I'm going to ignore this for now. Let's let's clear that out. Okay, so on this page, um, what I would do to figure out what files are rendering this page, typically, is I would grab something on the page that looks identificatable, uh, like this discovery input, search for a course type component. And I'm going to grab this label four equals discovery input, go to the source code, and search everything for it. Well, everything within my theme. And now you can see we found something that looks uh, familiar. So, this is the courses.html template file inside of my theme under templates under courseware. Boy, wow, that is jumpy. Um, let me up my font size here. Goodness, you know what? I may have to go and close Slack because this is this is not going to work. Hang on a second while I free up some space, some space, some RAM, RAM space. Quit Slack, please. I'm on my other monitor over here. It's not just another computer. Um, come on quit my password manager while I'm at it. Oh boy, Slack is struggling to close. I've got a beach ball going. What a process. Okay, bear with me while this closes. Uh, I will try and explain what's going on here <coughs> to the best of my ability. So you'll, one, of the, one of the major differences you'll notice between these two pages actually is the presence of this search control component, whatever we want to call it. This um, uh, field that has the uh, magnifying glass next to it lets us search, oh wow, I'm still half inspecting this. If I type coding and I hit enter, we get coding for designers and responsive web design because those both match this keyword. That's pretty cool. There's some funny hover behavior there. Um, but on our current courses page, we don't have that at all. Uh, my hope is to include this in the design for this page by um, putting a search bar basically at the top here. Um, that'll let you whittle down course the, the course list for um, whatever keywords you're looking for. It is a significantly different template than what we were using on the last version, but um, customizable um, and, and should be should be customizable for uh, my purposes here. Did Slack close? Yes, it did. That's 
great. I can actually already hear the fans on my computer slowing down. So I'm going to close a couple tabs that you can't see, which will hopefully help this a little further, if we are lucky. Okay. Right. We're back. So on this um, courses template, the um, this code here includes a discovery factory, which is what renders the templates for the search bits. Uh, so uh, that's what renders these sort of JavaScript. Well, that's what creates these JavaScript rendered um, course items on the page. Um, you can see there is a switch in here or an if um, statement that if course discovery enabled, it renders this bit. Uh, which looks like just a blank loading thing, um, at least to start, and otherwise it displays this template. <coughs> so uh, in the old system, I believe we had just shut off course discovery, and uh, actually I can simulate that. I can show you what the old page would have looked like by just nuking some of this stuff here. Let me see if I can do that quickly, just to demonstrate. I'm going to kill this. And this. Search refiners. And this as well. Wow, it is. My laptop is really struggling right now. I may have to go close a couple more tabs. Let's see what we can do with that right now. 2018 is a very difficult time to be a developer on a laptop, apparently. Okay, so I've saved this page. If I refresh it, it should look different. Okay, that is different. Uh, apparently, there are no courses coming in. <clears throat> so there are no courses being fed to this page, which means that this is not being iterated on ever. So let's take a look at courses.html in the edX platform side and see how this works. Well, actually, it's pretty close to identical. Well, maybe there's not much point in going through this exercise because my hope is to um, customize the course discovery things anyhow. So I'm just going to add them back in <coughs> and refresh this page, and we should get back to where we were. struggle bus today. Uh, maybe I'll close tower. <laughs> I'm just gonna pare down my laptop until nothing is running any longer. Oh my god, what's what is soaking up all the memory here? No. Oh. Well there's a free gig. Ah, okay. It looks like a program may have frozen in the background. Hopefully. Hopefully that was the cause of my problems here. It's working on force quitting. Okay, that was 800 megs of RAM freed up. If that doesn't help, I got nothing for you. <coughs> so, now we're back here. What I would like to do is uh, check out what I can do to put a, a white rectangle behind this. So. Um, Let's start by looking at what containers are on this page with my little inspector tool here. I'm going to grab this. We've got this section class equals courses container. We've got the find courses section above that. And I'm going to compare that to what's running on production right now uh, because theoretically that will help me to figure out what I'm missing. It looks like 
this course overview is part of the problem or part of the, the missing bit. So in here, if I had a course overview, no, that wouldn't do it. Okay, well, we there's a lot of missing bootstrappery in here as it works out. Um, you can see on production, we have the content wrapper, which wraps the entire bottom section of the page. It has this find courses bit, which of course we do have here. Then a course title, which isn't rendered here either. Um, and then a container, which is a bootstrap class that contains the sort of um, sub navigation for the catalog. Uh, and then the um, section called main, which is uh, the, the bit that contains essentially what I would consider to be the, the main content for this page. That is then broken up into a bootstrap row and then a nine and three width column, which are placed next to each other. Um, and I would suspect that the white part is defined by this. Yeah, here we go. So if I took that out, that has a gray background. So what I want to do is mimic this layout um, with this this uh, new um, the, the new code here. So we're going to start very simply by working our way from, ah boy, it scrolled for me. We're going to work our way from find courses into the bit that is displaying the, the content that's here now. So uh, let's go into here and look for find courses. I can spell it. Find courses. There it is. It's right there. Okay. <coughs> So now the hope is to configureize this to um, match what's on production here. Find courses, course overview. Oh boy. Inside of there we have a section called course container. We got that here, Courses container, Courses container, then the discovery form, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. My god. Okay, find courses. Beneath that is this div that contains the title of the course, which in this case will just be catalog, which has a header, a container, and a row. And this probably just says catalog. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. If I refresh this, we should probably see that header show up. There's my lovely catalog header. That's good. We're headed in the right direction. So we've done that. Now we want to do the container course menu, which actually I could probably just hit copy on, to be honest. Okay. That's also good. We're oh boy, we're very quickly getting pretty close to what we want. Hey, that's an interesting behavior. I must have I don't know if you can see that on the stream. As you leave the hover for what's on production right now, it appears to very briefly show a dotted underline before it fades out. I assure you that's not oh it does it here too. That's not intended behavior, but it's kinda cool. Um Alright. Now comes what should be also an easy part. But the tricky thing here is I need to determine which part of the page uses these IDs. 
which I suspect like the discovery form and all these IDs in here are necessary to make this form actually work. But if I wrap this whole thing, courses container, yeah, okay, okay, actually we can do that. That's great. Let me match up my alignment here. Uh, I discovered a VS Code plugin recently that colorizes your indentations, which makes this so much easier to read through. Okay, so this is going to be main, id equals main, class equals container, aria label equals content, tab index equals negative one. <coughs> That's great, but we want to wrap this whole section in that. Oh boy. Oh, this is jittery. Let's do it that way. Okay. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, that's what I want. Okay. Stop trying to help me. There we go. Okay. So that's all wrapped in this main now. We also want to put a div class equals catalog content row. Um, catalog content is probably used for our own styles, and row, of course, is a bootstrap class. We'll indent this yet again. And now we start to create the view split into two. So this is going to have an MD9 and a MD3. And this one's called course overview, and this one is called sidebar, which should split the page into two. And then this has a section with courses container, and everything else might be good. The sidebar pulls in information from a static page, uh, which we'll plug in in a bit. First, I'm going to refresh this thing and see what it looks like. Yeah, that looks much better already. <laughs> okay, now we're getting somewhere. This is good. Ah, uh, dear. What has happened? You can see some responsivity taking effect. Um, none of this is bad. All good. What is it that Bob Ross used to say? Happy little accidents. That's what, that's what we got here. This is great. So already the structure of this page looks much better. Um... There is a fix for this alignment here that we need to do, which has to do with... I actually think it's taking out this container class. No, 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 no. I'm smarter than that. This needs a class, and this needs a class. And that should align these two with this word gymnasium here. Well, one of the two. Let's see what I missed. Gosh, this is so slow. Help, how do I fix this? Closing unnecessary pages. I'd like to keep Twitch open so that I could see <laughs> if anyone's chatting with me. Uh, okay, let's see, let's close some more tabs. Hey, it looks like the SpaceX launch was delayed more, 3.45. Good, I don't have to worry about that now. Let's close all this crap. More tabs. What's going on? <coughs> uh, 
<laughs> I'm crippled on my live stream here. I don't know what to do about this. Close whatever I can here. Is there like a frozen tab of Chrome somewhere? I don't. I don't. Hold on. Activity monitor. Oh man, I think it's just my. The VM is. VM is using half of my RAM, and probably Chrome is using the rest. Good lord. Oh yeah, there are many, many Google Chrome helpers existing on my machine right now. Oh wow, okay. Well, I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. We're just gonna carry on, carrying on. Again, I'll close some more tabs here. With the goal of one day being able to do this. The whole stream thing. <clears throat> okay, so what I want to see is uh, what's going on with this row here? It's close enough. Wow. This is so slow. Okay, we've got a container. That container in it has a row. And that row has a column. How is that different from this? That's an easy enough style update. I'm looking for so that should move that back the next time we recompile our SAS, and then all those things line up, and that's a little nicer. Ish. Great, so that's that top of the page layout sorted. Let's take a look at bottom bit. <clears throat> okay, now the, the goal is to figure out why these are misaligned. Misaligned, misrendered, whatever, whatever's going on here. There's some fun stuff happening. To be honest, what it looks like is going on here is just that the um, I'm using this this template that's being rendered here is just a standard gym, um, standard Open edX template, and uh, I need to code over it with our gymnasium template. So let's work on that. Um, and I, well, I closed tower. I've been trying to to use much smaller commits. Let me see if I can do that. So. In my, oh, I brought this onto the wrong screen, did I? In my repo here, I'm gonna make um, make a couple of little commits. Some of these other things are um, in-flight code that should be on another branch, but hey, look how lazy I am. Not a best practice. You shouldn't do that. I also shouldn't do that. 
okay, now let's look at this course's template. So this is where we get into some of the frustrating magic of newer versions of Open edX that use these underscore templates. They're not technically supposed to be um, uh, customizable, but where there's a will, there's a way. Uh, and I th think um, we'll be able to, to update some of these things. So um, actually I can show in some of my recent commits, I've just been working on these. So if I go into LMS templates, then under discovery, this guy here, course card dot underscore, is what's being rendered here. Um, I can show you that by changing the word more here to, let's throw in an emoji, this guy. See, there's that emoji I just dropped in. So what we're going to do is essentially squash this template, and in its place, we're going to put um, the template that was being used in the non-dynamic uh, gymnasium course catalog page, which comes from courseware uh, catalog course.html, I do believe. So. Let's start by just just deleting this. Oh, this is an underscore template, though. So okay, so there's going to be some syntax updates. So I'm not actually just going to delete it. Uh, but I'm going to grab this. I'm going to paste it below the rest of the template here. And all of these dollar sign Django-y um, template languages are going to need to be replaced with the equivalent um, underscore template language from the course. <coughs> I think we can figure that out. So, <coughs> data course ID in this case, um, this is a an HTML, um, HTML5 data attribute thing that I created to, uh, that ties into some JavaScript that's used on this page to sort through courses. And for that, we need the course number, which looks like... Oh, please scroll. You can do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Content.number. Wow, this is super painful. I apologize. Data course ID here. Paste. This is the course number. Now we have a row and a column, and we want to link to the course's about page, which is done where the more button was, which is this here. Okay. Now we're going to grab the course's image, which is this. Sorry if this is really juddery for you, it is also for me. Okay, this is that same link. name and 
the description. Hmm, that might be harder to get. Depends on how this template is filled. But we will try what should be the obvious. Okay, so that updates that template. And now I should be able to delete all this. And save and refresh. Hey, Ned LK174 says, thank you for great coding. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. Uh, we'd love to know where you're watching from. Hey, cool, that mostly worked. <clears throat> There's some content missing here. Let me get rid of my dev toolbar for a second on both pages. Some content missing. But we're getting closer. <laughs> uh, it may just be that only part of this is loaded, like it's cut off at a certain character count. Or maybe that some of it is not displayed. So let's see what's going on here. No, it looks like just some of it is loaded. I wonder if I can do a character count on that. Let's see. Um... Three hundred eighteen arbitrary ass characters. So that's strange. Uh, huh. Are we sure? With, with the white space and everything. Okay, um, we that's something left for us to figure out. I'm sure we can sort through that, but this is looking pretty good. So let's let's prove that this still kind of works. Uh, I'm going to search for designers, hit enter, and there are two courses related to designers. Uh, the little chip, the chip fits in nicely, but needs to be. Uh, styled. <coughs> um, sidebar content is still missing, but we can do that. There is also some static content that's missing that might be a little tricky to make work with this layout style. Um, but we can put that in. That's just grabbing some copy. Let's grab this. So in my Courses. I have a courses container. And then inside of here, I have this guy. We can copy this, put it right below. Grab the copy for the gym shorts descriptor, which we'll put at the. Oop, I missed it. We'll drop in at the bottom here. Please, thank you. That's not what I wanted. Okay, so now this copy should also be on the page, although it's not exactly what we want, which you'll see in a second. <clears throat> I need to figure out the sorting logic to get these things dropped in in the right spots. Uh, 
And actually, already, we can see, like, for example, I want this form at the very top, in all likelihood. So we're going to need to split out some of this stuff, and that's totally okay. So let's grab these and figure out where they should go. This is the search component. That's the filter bar, which should go below the search component. Uh, and so, oops. If I put this here, I think they'll look like they're in the right place until the courses load dynamically. Hmm. No, okay, that's cool, that's cool. So it looks like the courses are being plugged in here. I see, okay. That's great, we can work with that. Um, this seems to be unused. Let's see. Let's delete it. Nope. Okay. There's a, a good bit of design finesse that's missing from here, too, that I will let distract me for a second. Um, like, this padding needs to go. We'll get rid of that in a bit. Yeah, like, that'll look much nicer. Maybe we should make this search component full width. It looks a little awkward at this. Ooh, a float, huh? So we'll slowly make some of these changes. For now, let's focus on uh, getting this list to drop in in between full courses and gym shorts. To start with, then we'll do more sorting. So let's just take a look at what it looks like if we do this. Oops, I mean, uh, design. <coughs> okay, so, ooh, geez. So right now, that is more or less where we would want it to be, more or less, or less or more. Um, God. Okay, and there's nothing like rogue or stray at the bottom of the page, which is cool. These, the learn more button doesn't look right. Yeah, that should be a full on button. Let's see what's going on there. <laughs> this is so slow. Ah, uh, much better. Okay. We're making progress here. <clears throat> okay. We want to now figure out how that list gets rendered. So it looks like it gets rendered inside of here.
And so I'm suspicious that on this page, these guys are inside of a UL that's not on my page right now. Let's, let's double, triple check that. UL listing courses. Let's see. It is not here. OK. Oh, look at that. OK. I think I did some, ah, I refreshed the wrong page. I think I did some JavaScript magic somewhere along the line to pull things into two s uh, separate lists after they load. breaks the page layout, presumably because some template somewhere is using courses-listing to do its thing. Yeah, okay. But, step, um, we can grab this and put it up here. And then we can, this will then split up the full courses in the gym shorts titles. Yeah. Okay, now what we need to do, actually, do I have any gym shorts on here? I don't. Gym shorts in gymnasium parlance are courses that uh, have an ID of, uh, that, well, you can see in the address. This is very hard. I want to point to the screen, but you can't tell where I'm pointing. Uh, let's here. Let's look at this link. Uh, the course number, which is this 101 here, if it is a 1XX course, it's a full course, and if it is a 001, it would be a gym short. So that's our current parlance, at least. Um, I don't actually have any gym shorts here, and that will make this challenging to test. But hey, for now, it's perfectly sorted. <laughs> All right. Well, let's compare what we've got. This looks, this is the production. This is my in-flight in um, dev version. They're getting, they're getting closer to better. Um, we're going to need to do some styling of the things that happen around here. Like, this can't happen. That's not good. Um, this is also not good. So we'll work on that. There, this needs some space above. Uh, yeah, there, there's a, a lot of lot of tightening up that we can do around this interface, and I can probably work on a lot of that without uploading this other gym short. For starters, I'm going to half this distance here and move this guy up to 20 pixels on this guy here, because I think that looks more even than it does with 40. Justin, if you're watching, I'm happy to change it to whatever uh, you would like it to be. For now, I'm going to start with this. Justin, of course, is our designer um, at Gymnasium. Unbelievably talented and skilled and helpful and uh, is the genius behind why Gymnasium looks so good. I am merely the lackey delivering the goods. Let's delete that because it's empty. rule hmm find okay where boy actually it doesn't look like this rule is taking does it See this? Oh, I see, I see. Okay. Padding, top. Was it padding? Yes. Let me specify that there. Lovely. Let's do something for this here. Oh, wow. Oh, there's some floating happening then, huh? this hmm. 
and work on some of these gigantic paddings that are in the way. Dib dot courses. This guy. Um, refresh my page here for a second. <clears throat> Just going to try and cinch up some of these things here. So this has a very large top padding. And we're just going to zero that out on both sides. made a bunch of CSS changes. I'm going to render them. You can see my fancy new terminal here. Um, by rerunning the dev stack. We'll let that do its thing. This will take a few minutes. But when it comes back, those SAS changes should be in place. And then we can keep iterating on this. It takes a while. It is a labor of love and confusion, and in some many cases, pain. But we're getting there. This ficus upgrade was not nearly as bad as the last one to eucalyptus, uh, which was probably the worst one so far. Um, but that's a, that's a good sign that they're getting better. It is just com like very tedious. This this process of watching SAS compile for three minutes at a time. I do, I don't know, 50 times a day, conservatively. I do it a lot when I'm working on the theme, uh, and it is mentally exhausting. Um, because you go from being completely on and completely focused on whatever changes you're making to three minutes of mental space where I can kind of zone out and stare around the room or whatever, go on Twitter or YouTube or whatever. Then when I come back to it, it's hard to like, fixate on the, the changes that should be in place and remember what you were working on and all that. Uh, it's, it's a very large gap mentally that's that's hard to work around. Um, the developer experience, uh, therefore, is more challenging than it could be, uh, in particular if we're using something like Webpack or whatever the fancy node things are these days. Okie doke. Refresh. <laughs> per friggin' usual. It looks like none of my changes held. Uh, deep breath. Okay. Why? Always why? This one changed. That's great. This... Negative one thing is gone, but now it has like a like a forty padding on top. Uh, what? Courses container div dot courses course overview. courses find courses oh look there's two course overviews that's challenging I believe that is a misstep yeah 
think I want to get rid of that. Let's see how that affects things. Hmm, maybe it didn't affect things, but. That's okay. This should be 20, like the 20 I put in to tell it to do that, but it didn't. Let's see what's making it do that. 20, 0. That's what I want. Find courses, courses container. Let's see. Courses. Course overview courses dot container. There it is. Am I editing the right file? Uh, yes. Still yes. Okay. Oh, look at that. Hmm. Uh, I see, I see. None of my changes took place, I think, because sometimes in this new world of open ed -xery, I need to run a new command to do this. Hang on, I will show you. I'm pulling up docs. Okay, I lied. Let's recompile the SAS one more time. What I was thinking was there's a command that, that's run, I guess it's on the full stack version, not dev stack, um, which is an update assets command. And I don't see anything about it here. And this is specifically, oh, this is Ginkgo. Yeah, it looks the same, though. I didn't use the fast option, I don't believe. No, yeah, it's compiling my SAS right now. Hold your breath, maybe this will work. Maybe not. Okay, let's refresh the thing. 
Get rid of these docks. Please, please, thank you. Okay, that didn't work. Let's clear my cache. Very confusing. Because presumably this rule is coming from my SAS because it has all of these. Ooh, 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 sorry, because this has Brendan Grotesque in it and all these other things. This is definitely one of my um, style rules, which I believe if I searched even for that. Yeah, nowhere in my source any longer. Should be compiled, should be added in here. Sometimes when I run into these things with the Eucalyptus release, the only way to get them to take is to literally reboot my VM, and it's very confusing, and I don't know why. Um, but we can do that, I guess. It's not super fun. It takes like 10 minutes, but... Uh, This is what it's like to reboot a virtual machine from the command line. Now we're all learning together. While we wait, if you're watching and hanging out, tell me about the best podcast you've listened to recently. I'm a big fan of Pod Save America. Um, I listen to a lot of tech podcasts, but for the most part, those are kind of just noise I have on in the background while I work. updated without me. Okay. Now we recompile, hopefully to some effect this time. You never know.
Ooh, the Radiotopia Showcase, huh? I have not listened to that. I did just recently get my Radiotopia uh, Kickstarter backer thing, which is around here somewhere. If I recompile again, I'll go grab it and show it off. I'm a big fan of Radiotopia. And actually, as always, I think Reply All is the best podcast that exists. It is very, very funny and very creative, and the hosts are amazing. back. Let's all collectively hold our breath for inevitable disappointment. I'm not optimistic. I'm never optimistic about this stuff. This is the kind of stuff that wastes hours of my day and kills my productivity. Kills my will to live. Not really, but my will to work on this stuff quickly recedes when I have to deal with crap like this. Okay. Maybe... Yeah, okay. Okay, okay, how are we doing here? That looks more better. It was... Uh, yeah, okay. What do you know? Rebooting my VM did the trick. Um, although now it looks like I want nothing here. So I'm going to end up going and changing that rule anyway. And what's going on here? Padding top, I want that to be zero. Okay. Those are easy changes to make, though. Ooh, wrong keystroke. Padding top. Nothing, please. There's a lot of space between these guys. What's going on with that? Oh. Oh. I don't think I need all of those embedded, or, yeah, double-ized ULs. Uh, in fact... Oh, my God, my laptop is very hot right now. I'm killing it. All right, let me get rid of this and this and refresh the page. Which, if nothing else, will get rid of some redundancy of layout. It doesn't get rid of that huge gap. Because article.row has a 3M bottom, bottom padding. Let's see. No, I want this, please. Turns out we don't necessarily need that. Yeah, those gaps look just right to me. <coughs> okay, we got to figure out what's going on with that. And there's some alignment issues. Oh, it's that H1 gigantic top padding in the way. Okay. And even top margin. Let's see what we can do about that. That's helpful. Which one's in here? Of course, is course item header. Ah, I see. Okay, that all will take effect once we recompile again. I'm gonna recompile, and I'm gonna go grab my killer ass Radiotopia backer thing. I'll be right back.
Kinder, I think this was the probably $30 backer tier, $25, $30 backer tier. But I now have a really nice kiss cut decal for decal sticker for each of the Radiotopia podcasts, and they are awesome. Uh, yeah, many many cool ones. There are a bunch of other stickers in here. I've already slapped some of them on things, but they're a really nice packaging too. Those guys do a good job. I don't mind backing up podcasts that I love, even if I don't know what I'm going to do with these stickers. I haven't really been putting them on my laptop these days, but I don't know. Maybe I'll go wallpaper the town with them. Oof. Yeah, they would definitely melt on my laptop right now. It is like trackpad is cooking egg hot right now. That is super unpleasant. actually kind of interesting too that my laptop never seems to charge to 100% while I'm streaming. I'm using, I would imagine, quite a bit of watts and volts and amps and all the other juices in electricity. Okay, we're back. Let's refresh. I'm interested to see what the solution is to the short description being truncated here. I wonder if that's something we're just going to have to deal with. Mm, no, that didn't get rid of that. Padding at least. Padding margin? What is it? Margin. Why not? Find courses. Look, man. Find courses, catalog, my courses. Oh, because it's no longer in my courses. Uh, I bet this is on the dashboard. That should fix that. We're gonna want to put some spacing in there. We can do that. Let's let's take a look at what these are starting to look like. A little better. We can figure out what's wrong with that hover behavior, which is making me feel very sad. Um, the better hover behavior. I don't really think that's the answer. I don't know why there's a gray background around it either. That's the that's an active filter, you see. Uh-huh. Let's kill that. That's already better. Snap. probably want to get rid of like that. That looks pretty good actually. This clear all needs to become a gym button. Okay, maybe not. We might just leave that a link of some sort. Um, Alright, let's see if we can affect some of those. Oh, actually, this is going to take some new discovery templates, I believe. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I'm going to need to, like, grab a bunch of these and update these. Um, we can do that. Whatever. Facets dot underscore should be in here somewhere. There we go. We're going to grab this template and put it into here.
paste it in there. <clears throat> <laughs> if list is huge, great. Um, this is not what I expected it to be. So maybe that's not the one I wanted. Let's do facet option. Yep, that's the one. Okay. Close that. that, paste this in here, and we want to give this class a better, better name. I'm going to refresh this page just to remind myself what I did there. Okay, I'm going to search now. got this active filter thing I think that's all I did yeah okay we're gonna change this to say gym button and I don't know what a selected facet would do for search let's see uh, nothing okay great maybe I'll leave that selected thing there just in case it does something for us later. And of course we want to get rid of that gray background which came from the active filter nonsense. And the padding nonsense. So we're going to copy that rule and put it in here. Find courses, filters, li. Okay, we're going to put it up here. Say padding, none, background, none. And then for the Um, I, I have mixed feelings about uppercase there. I mean, it's not case sensitive. The mixed feelings are gone. And we want to make this guy full width. <coughs> Okay, we're going to make a discovery form.
fix this clear all button. <laughs> nope. Uh, okay. Also no. Oop. Well, I think we want to make that just a text link. We'll work on that s next. Let me recompile here and see how we're doing. We're back. Hopefully when we refresh the page it looks similar to what we have now. Of course not. You son of a gun. <laughs> uh, no. Why does that only say active filter now? This should say gym button. Class gym button. No, you don't say that. You don't wanna. Uh, it's probably still rendering. Yeah. Okay. This is another one of those things where I'm gonna have to restart that damn VM to get this to work. Um, Okay, well, it's 3 o'clock. Let's call it a day for the stream, uh, lest we waste another 10 minutes of our life collectively watching me reboot this silly VM. Um, anyway, thanks for hanging out. Uh, I will be back on next week. We can do more of um, coding. Uh, hopefully make some more progress on some new features or small bugs or something like that. If there's things you want to see, you know where to find me. Uh, I'm on Twitter, uh, at Irreverent Mike. I think that's my Twitter handle nowadays. Um, my, um, yeah, Irreverent Mike on Twitter, M by Fulco at aquent, A Q U E N T dot com if you want to email me. Um, and otherwise, I'll be back here on Twitch next week. Uh, chase me down then. Catch you guys later. <laughs>